Okay, people, so we're gathered here together today. We've got a bunch of questions that have come in from fans about certain uh, aspects about how to do comics. I mean, the question today is what line weight? Depends on the light source. The fact is when you put a super thin line around the entire thing, there's not the same sense of weight that you get if you vary the weight. There's a uh, genius named Mobius, a French artist, who never varied his line weight. He, uh, he pulled it off just fine, but it's not always the case. Uh, what I'm gonna show you here is the basic rules about line weight, okay? And I'm gonna show you three examples here. One is from a Jack Kirby page, the other page is from another Jack Kirby page, and then the final page is gonna be from my own work that I'm working on for the next Nexus hardcover called The Battle for Thune World. This is actually a Xerox right here. This is a um, Kirby page inked by Vince Collab. I happen to like Coletta's uh, work a lot. He added a lot of texture to Kirby's work. He gave Jack's work a weight factor that wasn't present in a lot of other inkers. This is your basic feathering here uh, from dark to light to show impasse. It's basically a light source kind of a thing that Kirby invented to show violent action. These muscles right here, if you want to go into light source, things like that, the light's coming from here. And that's why these these lines are bolder. So when we get to the back area, Coletta uh, improvised by adding things that I've never seen done before, which is dry brush on the, the back of this guy's anatomy. And I happen to think this looks really cool. You see a lot of thick and thins there, and you see some feathering at the, at the bottom here. This is an, another thing that was rarely done by other inkers. It was generally not done by Jack but it was added by the inker to embellish what Jack Kirby had done in the pencil form. A lot of whiteout down here on the grass area, but it would just kind of with either pen or brush block in the main the main section of grass. And then when he needed to, he would just go in with a whiteout and just kind of slash in things that would go over the background grass to make it like a foreground kind of grass. But I happen to like this page a lot as an example of line weight. If you look at the rocks in the background, the same dry brush kind of thing was employed on the back. The thing about line weights is that, or, or rather just composition in general, is that no matter what you do on a page, it has to read well. If you clutter the thing up too much with too much texture, you're gonna get what I call is a camouflage effect. And camouflage is meant to obscure the object so that you can't really see it very well. You don't want to do that. You want to make the thing clear. But it's another it's another artistic tool that you can use with your arsenal to make things um, work the way you want them to. Let's look at the second page here. <clears throat> this is from an original right here. This is from a Captain America page from Tales of Suspense. That was probably done in 1966. And this is, again, the work of Jack Kirby. The inker is, is responsible mostly for the line weight. Kirby indicated everything. He was a very, very tight penciler. But in order to reproduce these things correctly, in came the art of inking. And that was done with either a pen or a brush and black India ink to make it reproducible. And you can see that the guy that uh, happened to ink this page, uh, Frank Giacoya, was a master at line weight and just brush control, period. He was one of Kirby's uh, best inkers in my mind. He really knew what he was doing. So again, the line weights um, are coming from, the light's coming from this direction right here. This isn't necessarily a hard, fast rule, especially with a guy like Kirby, who did a lot of invention with his, his uh, musculature and where he placed blacks. But you can see if you squint right here, this thing is very, even with all the background details, um, the visibility factor is very clean and strong. Now here, <clears throat> there is no background. You didn't think there was, it was any background needed right there to make it read instantly instead of um, having to take a second to decipher this stuff. Again, notice the flames going on in this panel. Um, <clears throat> there's not a lot of detail around the central figure. It's, 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 there's a lot of negative white space around him. And that really helps um, <clears throat> keep him at the center of attention without any kind of clutter going on. This this panel, of course, is foolproof because there's nothing behind them except for speed lines. But all the other detail is down here where um, it doesn't interfere with the main figure. So these slashes of musculature, that's something Kirby invented. No one had ever done that besides him. These wisp lines here, these speed lines, were necessarily very thin because they're not they're not part of an object. They're part of the air just moving fast. The final page I'm gonna show you here, which is actually quite an oversized page, is, is my own work for, uh, 
on the Battle for Thin World. It's the latest Nexus volume that's coming out. And you can see I employ the same techniques that, any, that anyone else does. When the forum gets round, it gets darker down here. And I also employ a lot of dry brush just because I happen to like that look. The traditional uh, feathering that has been done in comics uh, throughout the 60s and 70s in part of the 80s, I don't really use that. I use a, a very illustrative kind of a technique with my brush to indicate uh, form going around. I mostly start with inking uh, with a pen because I have more control over that. And then eventually I'll go in with uh, the brush. And sometimes that can be just a flat brush or I can just you know chisel the forms in with a, a simple stroke. Or it can be with another uh, size eight or size 10 synthetic brush and put some of these slash lines in there that have more weight what a normal pen would give me and of course the black placements are very are very crucial things have to read it, it always this is a panel here where uh, the the black parts are kind of random this is a part where here <clears throat> where we have a transitional effect and it's very important that i showed the black and you see the figure storytelling wise it goes from erect to slightly bent to totally bent because he's not in a good state here. This character is named Dave. This panel right here, you can't go wrong with that. It's very clear what's going on. I also employ whiteout as a as a airy kind of a streak that if I can't get it with black dry brush, I'll get it with white. So often I'll, I'll go back and forth and um, use a little bit of both to get uh, the look that I want. And the look is what every artist uh, tries to get when they, when they um, finish their work at the inking stage. Um, so what I'll do right here is I'll just show you directly on, on paper here. And I'll grab this marker right here. This is a signed Pantel marker. It's made in Japan and it's got, it's got this beautiful thick and thin quality. So if I was gonna demonstrate what I just got done showing you, this is how I would do it. just enough to make it read. And these lines are, are going forward like this to show the form is going back in space. But you have to be selective about it. Don't put it everywhere because you're gonna clutter things up. Uh, you know, the art, of, the art of keeping things clean and uh, with, with a sense of brevity is, 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 is something you can get lost in. A lot of people really like to get involved in, in uh, tiny details. Well, <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with that, but you gotta make sure that when you get done all, with all those details, um, things read as cleanly as, as if you didn't put all those details in. So that's my recommendation for to uh, look at line weight. And I appreciate the questions. Uh, we'll keep rolling along until we get them all answered. Thanks and we'll see you next time. Rude Dude signing off.